Justin Thomas enjoyed an incredible 2017 season, achieving far more than even he could have imagined. A first major and winning the FedEx Cup, not bad. We sat down with two well-respected journalists to discuss his dramatic rise. I think that uh, his year just started out so phenomenally well when you think about the numbers that he shot in at the Sony Open in Hawaii. I just think that set up his whole year from a confidence standpoint. Not that he was lacking confidence, but that he knew what kind of a game that he was bringing to the course every day. And I think he could see the possibilities of what the season could be like. I don't think that anyone had an idea how it was going to transpire. Essentially rewrites the PGA Tour record books. Kind of gave you a glimpse of how special the season was. You ask him about it now. He'll tell you that he got very disappointed through the middle of the summer that he, he didn't continue that momentum. He finished strong and won, the major champ, won a major championship. But in his mind, it was not a mission completed because he didn't sustain it over the course of the year, which is really amazing when you think of what he ended up doing. Thomas boasts a well-rounded game, combining impressive distance and supreme control under pressure. And it was this balance that was key to his success in 2017, a year that saw him truly become a global superstar. If you look at his game, I mean, he has all the tools. I think everyone knew that even when he was coming out of college in Alabama. Hits the ball a long way, has great hands. I mean, he's a five-tool guy, as they say in baseball. The thing that clicked last year and he said it and his caddy Jimmy Johnson has said it he sort of learned that he could win without his best stuff that he could win after having a bad hole or two and that he didn't need to be so hard on himself I think that was the biggest lesson that really pushed him over the top one thing I think it takes is a belief and that's different from confidence I think you have to have the belief that what I've done before worked and I'm going to find that you know that sort of that magic formula again and and um, it's not always necessarily success based on hitting the ball perfect. If you, uh, if you tried to do that, you'd probably drive yourself crazy, but it is about finding a way to make a score, which people tend to forget about a lot of times. It's like, well, you know, I, how'd you hit it? Well, I didn't hit that good, but I shot 65. Really, that's all that matters, and I think Justin discovered a little bit of that too. One sometimes when he didn't really have it, including the PGA, he wasn't necessarily playing great. And that comes from belief and knowing that what you're doing has worked before. You can do it again. Be patient. Patience is big. Another key factor in Thomas's development is his friendly rivalry with the likes of fellow young Americans Jordan Spieth, Ricky Fowler and Daniel Berger. This blend of competitiveness and support has clearly pushed him and some of his best friends on tour to even greater heights than they would have managed otherwise. They want to probably beat each other more than they want to beat, you know, some of the other guys. They, they definitely want to win no matter what. Um, they do take a particular amount of enjoyment out of beating their friends. It's fun to watch these guys cheer each, each other and one another on. They're there for each other, like Ricky Fowler and Jordan Spieth were there when Justin Thomas won that PGA last year and cheering him on and congratulating them right at the end. That's great. That's great for the game. It's great for what, you know, in this world we don't see enough sportsmanship and things like that. So all of that is good. And yet, at the end of the day, they want to win. When Jordan was paired with Justin and he shot the 59, the first thing that came to Jordan's mind is he actually beat him in proximity to the green. He was seven yards closer on average than Justin was, and it bothered him. Like, he thought he frustrated him a little bit. And it gives you a glimpse into how competitive they are. It's that friendly rivalry. Those South Florida guys now, you said Ricky and Dustin, Jordan, uh, uh, Justin, uh, all of those guys, I mean, they, they play against each other on a regular basis, and I think there is a hunger that you know, there's the idea that they continue to push each other. Everyone can agree that the Kentucky native enjoyed a season to remember in 2017. Now, focus switches to this year, seeing how Justin handles his newfound status in the game and the pressure that comes with it. It's always telling when a guy comes off a, of a year like this where player of the year and FedEx Cup champ and major winner, all of these things that you've accomplished. But I mean, very, very quickly, you need to reset your goals and set into the new year. I thought it was very telling to go back to the idea that they're very mature, that he knows that that's going to be the biggest challenge going into this year. He knows he knows how to win. He knows that his tour card is secure. He doesn't have any of those things to worry about now. But finding a way to re-motivate himself is going to be the key. And one of the things I found the most fascinating when you ask him about it at the end of last season, 
he said two of the people he was going to talk to were Tiger Woods and Jack Nicklaus, because they're the only ones really in the history of the game who have followed up phenomenal seasons with another phenomenal season. So you have to like where his head is. The thing that he has to understand is my game is good enough, my confidence is okay, I believe in myself. I might not play as well as I did last year, and that's okay. Um, but I do think that if he follows up with another major, all bets are off, whether it's the Masters or US Open something, winning the PGA again, because that in itself would be a great year, just to win one of the four majors is a heck of an achievement.